are very thankful to Sogan University for employing me um, over this past school year to do some teaching of writing classes. And um, actually without coronavirus, I wouldn't be able to do it. And the reason why is because I'm doing other work as well and Zoom is so convenient. We do everything over Zoom. So I've um, been teaching writing like that. It's kind of great. I wrote a little bit of a prose poem, I guess, in this literary journal. Can you see that? Okay, so this is from Doma Ben. And I wrote a little bit about coronavirus and wearing masks and funny smells. So that was, that was fun. I write about adoption issues and I am an internationally adopted person and you really cannot untangle diasporic issues from adoption issues if you're talking about international adoption. I was adopted in 1972 from Korea to the United States and I grew up in Minnesota with a white family. I didn't know any Korean people. I didn't have any Korean culture, nothing. So yeah, I am an ethnic Korean, but I was not raised as a Korean. I was raised as a white person from Minnesota. But now I live in Korea and I've been living here in my uncomfortable home for about, I guess, 17, 18 years now. So I guess right now I'm a foreigner. Like I was born a Korean citizen. I have a Korean body. I'm living in Korea, but I am, I think, living as a foreigner in Korea now. So my first book is called The Language of Blood, and that was about my experience as an adoptee. Um, from the time I was very small until like right after I met my Korean mom who has now passed away. And then the second one was called Outsiders Within. That was an anthology of transracially adopted people and also um, family members and people who had done research on transracial adoption. And then the third one is called Fugitive Visions. And that was kind of about my, the first couple of years when I lived in Korea as a foreigner and as an adoptee in the adoptee community, how can a person exiled as a child without a choice possibly fathom how he would have turned out had he stayed in Korea? How many educational opportunities must I mark on my tally sheet before I can say it was worth losing my mother? How can an adoptee weigh her terrible loss against the burden of gratitude she feels for her adoptive country and parents? So when I just when I just did this one, I wrote for this literary journal, which is published by Doma Bam. Uh, I that was the first time I ever wrote something for publication directly into Korean, and I needed help. So I I had help from a friend to help to clean it up, and it was a very interesting and fun experiment for me because, as you know, Korean language and the English language in terms of syntax are like totally opposite from each other. So the way things come out is totally different. And, you know, I really, um, um, I, think, I think in English, usually, sometimes there are some things like I really don't want to like, okay, so this is, this is so cheap, but like I, I get most of my writing impulses out on Facebook. And so sometimes I'll make a little post in Korean because there are some things that I just feel that I want to talk about in Korean, like mostly about my family or um, yeah, but you know, basically I think in English, writing English, like, uh, what else do I have? I, I only have English, really. So there it is. And I really like what she did with 
her meditations on Hangul in her book, Skirtful of Black. So Sun Young is adopted. She's also co-editor with me of Outsiders Within, along with Julia Chinieri Opera. And she just did this like heartrending, beautiful meditation. As a person who doesn't speak or read Korean on the Korean alphabet. And it was like really beautiful. And I thought it's so amazing that we can um, see the beauty in it, even if it's even if it's uh, not our language. So my story with Teresa Ha Kyung Cha is I had no idea who she was, and I was introduced to her by this uh, young white woman from Oregon named Emma. And she was like, have you ever read Dictae? And I was like, what? And so she showed this book to me and I was just blown away because like, who, who knows? I mean, Teresa Ha Kyung Cha like that, that's, I, I'm sure like people have written their PhD dissertations on it. I know they have, um, but just the feeling of all of that disjointedness from being an immigrant and from grasping at Korean identity and having only rudimentary Korean skills and like this really deep sense of longing, I guess we call it Han in Korean. Yeah, that's, that's just kind of how my stuff comes out too. It doesn't really come out any different. Yeah, so this is always bad luck to talk about what you're going to be working on. And um, I've talked about many things like I've thought about and like nothing comes to fruition. And I think I, I also like after I completed Fugitive Visions, I also said, I don't want to write under contract either. Like writing under contract really sucks because you have to finish it on time. And I think there is something in there that I definitely want to write about if I ever get time because like I'm selling insurance because I have to make money and I'm a single mother and I'm raising my kid. Um, but we lost a friend um, some years ago and I've really been grieving ever since. And, and I think that the way for me to process grief is to, to write. So I think I, I do need to do that. I just feel so grateful that I'm included, thank you, thank you so much because I don't even hardly write anymore, but I guess I'm still running on fumes from what I did 20 years ago. So thank you um, personally. And then also thank you, you know, for thinking about adoptees as Koreans and as part of the diaspora. I thank you so much for that. I would, um, would really like to ask readers to think about this as more than just literature and that this is also about public policy. This is about decisions that we make as a, as a society about how we treat the most vulnerable members of society who are children and how we preserve their rights and what we think about families and single mothers and how we um, deal with families that are having temporary problems. I would really love it for the society to be kinder to children. And that's all, thank you. <laughs>